Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky recently reported the home sharing giant's record second quarter results. Revenue was up a whopping 58% versus last year and up 73% versus 2019. Airbnb was one of the few travel companies that grew right through the pandemic. Chesky ascribes that success to the company's adaptable business model. They now list nearly every type of space in every type of location. So however travel changes, the company feels it can adapt. Airbnb's fastest growing category was stays of 28 days or longer. Those long-term stays are up 25% from last year and up 90% from 2019. It's a new world with work from home flexibility for so many employees. Take a listen as Chesky shares his insights into the evolution of home sharing. Our Q2 results demonstrate that Airbnb has achieved growth and profitability at scale. From a growth perspective, we exceeded 103 million nights and experiences booked. Now, this was our largest quarterly number ever. Revenue was $2.1 billion, up 58% from last year, or 64% excluding foreign exchange. Gross booking value was $17 billion, up 27% from last year, or 34% if you exclude foreign exchange. Now, both revenue and GBV were 73% higher than Q2 2019, significantly outperforming the travel industry. Now, from a profitability perspective, we had our most profitable Q2 ever. Net income of $379 million was a nearly $700 million improvement from Q2 2019. Adjusted EBITDA was $711 million. Now, this represents a 34% adjusted EBITDA margin which is significantly up from the 16% margin in Q2 2021 and negative 4% in Q2 2019. Finally, we generated $795 million of free cash flow. Now this is a $1.1 billion improvement from the nearly $300 million cash burn two years ago at the depth of the pandemic. Over the last 12 months, Airbnb generated $3 billion in free cash flow, nearly $3 billion, and ended the quarter with nearly $10 billion in cash. So what explains this transformation in our business? Well, first, our business model is adaptable. We have nearly every type of space in nearly every location, so however travel changes, we can adapt. And regardless of the economic environment, our guests come to Airbnb because they can find great value, and our hosts can earn extra income. Second, we've relentlessly innovated while all still staying focused and disciplined. When the pandemic began in 2020, we made some incredibly difficult decisions. We significantly reduced spending, making us a leaner and more focused company. And we've kept this discipline ever since, allowing us to keep the hiring and investment plans made in the beginning of the year. And Airbnb is well positioned for whatever lies ahead. In fact, we're so confident in our long-term growth and profitability that today we're announcing a $2 billion share repurchase program. And this is coming only a year and a half after our IPO. Now, returning to our Q2 results, our strong financial performance is driven by a number of positive business trends. First, guest demand on Airbnb is as high as ever. In Q2, we surpassed 103 million nights and experiences booked, marking our highest quarterly number ever. Now, despite broader macroeconomic concerns, we still saw a 25% increase in nights and experiences booked compared to the quarter of 2021. Now, early in Q2, strong guest demand exceeded our expectations. This was because guests in Europe and North America booked earlier than they have historically. Now, given this earlier booking, growth rates compared to last year decelerated in May and June. And since the end of Q2, what we've seen is growth in Nice Book reaccelerate from June to July as we enter peak travel season. Second, guests continue to return to cities and cross borders. In previous quarters, we've talked about how we saw significant growth driven by surges in domestic travel, as well as travel to rural destinations. Now, these trends continue, but we're also seeing guests returning to cities and crossing borders above pre pandemic levels. Third, guests continue to stay longer in Airbnb. They're not just traveling Airbnb, they're now living on Airbnb. 
We saw long-term stays of 28 days or more remain our fastest growing category by trip length compared to 2019. And long-term stays has increased nearly 25% from a year ago. And actually long-term stays have increased almost 90% since Q2 2019. Fourth, guest demand is driving growth of our host community. We continue to see the strongest supply increases in areas of greatest demand with non-urban active listings up 50% compared to Q2 2019. But as demand is returning to cities, we're also seeing an increase in total urban supply. And we believe the upgrades we introduced last year, including our new host onboarding flow and air cover are supporting this growth, but we're not stopping there. So you're gonna see some exciting new product features to recruit the next generation of hosts later this year. Finally, I'd like to share a few highlights from the 2022 summer release. In May, we introduced Airbnb categories. Since launch, listings in Airbnb categories have been viewed more than 180 million times. Through categories, we are distributing guest discovery across more destinations and dates. Now, we also introduced air cover for guests. Since launch, the net promoter score uh, for guests that had an issue with their stay has already improved. In the rare incident, instance where a host cancels, air cover has led to 10% more rebookings. So to recap, we achieved significant milestones this quarter with our results. Nights and experiences booked were our highest ever. Revenue and adjust EBITDA were records for Q2, and free cash flow was $795 million. In the last 12 months, we generated nearly $3 billion in free cash flow. Our next question is from Doug Anmuth with JP Morgan. Your line is open. Thanks for taking the questions. Um, just hoping you can talk a little bit about uh, just kind of macro environment and just what you're seeing in terms of consumer activity or types of trips being booked, and also just to get your view on long-term stays. Uh, I think you talked about 25% growth year over year, um, but just the, the trends there going forward. Thanks. Dave? Sure. Well, if you start at the macro environment, again, we are, you know, very pleased with our results despite any kind of macroeconomic. You know, we're seeing strong demand here in Q3. As I said, the Q2 nights experiences grew 25% year over year, seeing a similar growth for Q3, you know, and our demand in Q4 reservations is really strong, as I mentioned kind of earlier. Um, you know, we, what we've seen so far is North America and Europe have been our strengths. Um, you know, we're seeing, but we are seeing an uptick in uh, more cross-border and more urban. So th those are historic strength areas for us. And we're starting to see those parts of the businesses come back. Um, but ultimately, if you just kind of step back, you just see the resilience of our business overall, right? You know, that because we have so much different kinds of supply in so many places around the world, we have any kind of place for anyone that wants to travel. And there's just so much pent-up demand for travel and just so much demand for travel in general that people would like to spend money on the experience of travel and getting out of their home more than on, um, you know, things that, you know, we're just continue to see that great strength um, in our business. And then in terms of long-term stays, you know, it continues to be the fastest growing business by tripling. So if you look at nights of 28 days or longer, um, that part of the business is growing faster since 2019 than any other you know, segment stays. And actually, if you kind of sub-segment it, you know, nearly 50% of our nights are at seven days or longer, and which I think, again, you start to stay any place seven days or more, and Airbnb is the best way to kind of experience that stay. So the you know, long-term stay trend continues to be very solid, um, you know, growing faster than, than any other part of the business. The next question is from James Lee with Mizuho. Your line is open. Great. Thanks for taking my question. And, and maybe as we look into FY23, obviously we have a lot of economic uncertainties here. Uh, if the economy indeed slow down and consumers start to trade down, how do you think that impacts Airbnb, uh, Airbnb's business? And also on the other hand, if you look at expenses, the demand slow down. Is there anything in your cost structure you could optimize to offset any potential headwinds. Thanks. Uh, Dave, do you want to take this? Sure. And I think we've highlighted this a bit on the call that, you know, we, you don't know what the economy is going to 
spring, but we do know that Airbnb is resilient to almost any kind of economic shock. As, as Brian mentioned, you know, we're founded in a recession and we've obviously thrived in the um, era of COVID, despite COVID. And what we're just finding is that people can come to Airbnb because we have any kind of property, whether it's, you know, a small shared room or a private room to, you know, luxury stays, we have something for anyone depending on their travel needs. And like we saw in COVID, if they can't cross borders, they're going to stay domestically. They get in the car and they go down the road. If domestic, if air travel gets too expensive, you know, they again, they can stay domestically and they can basically within their budget find the perfect place for them because we have such a diversity of um, types of offerings for them. So I think that is one of the things that just gives us this great resilience. And then, you know, in terms of expenses, if, if the business slows down, I mean, again, we've already made the hard choices. In 2020, you know, we substantially reduced our, our fixed costs. We eliminated a number of positions. We moved from being divisional to functional. So we are a leaner, tighter machine, and, and we will remain that way. We're going to continue to grow. We're growing headcount in the, you know, maybe a high single-digit percentage rates. But um, that is going to be able to support us for the very long term. And we're going to remain very focused and disciplined in um, our investments. So um, I feel really good about you know, the position that we're in with our investment level. Thank you. The next question is from Naved Khan with Truist Securities. Your line is open. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm really surprised by the continued strength in, in North America and in the U.S. I think uh, you talk about a 37% growth in uh, in nights and experiences versus versus uh, EMEA, maybe up 25%. Uh, is it just that EMEA continues to lag, or you know, just from everything that we've been hearing, it seems like EMEA saw like a burst of demand in the second quarter. So just trying to reconcile that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, EMEA is still lagging behind the acceleration that we've seen in North America. We think that that is actually one of the opportunities for, um, you know, future acceleration of the business. I mean, clearly things like, you know, the impact of the war in Ukraine certainly has, has had uh, an impact. And, um, you know, there's obviously the economic impact of um, even just foreign exchange rates, you know, lower euro and and. British pound relative to the U.S. dollar. So, you know, there are some reasons why Europe's been lagging. Um, it's still a strong business for us. It's still doing well, but it could even do better. 